Okay. So grab yeah, your mic. For the love of God, get in this mic. Let's go. I'll go after you. Well, I produce as well. I make records. So for me, it's beyond DJ. Although I started off as a DJ, I've always been into records, as I said earlier. And um, going on what Theodore just said, it is about being diverse for me. And I think every DJ should open their minds up to all kinds of music because that's what hip hop was founded on. Um, if it weren't for the likes of people like Bombada, you know, breaking records like Apache, which is a rock record, we wouldn't have hip hop, really. Um, Sinister. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm a bona fide junkie. I buy records all the time, like every week. I'm on eBay. I just went to Academy Records yesterday. Like, I stay in the bins. You know, we're in a new era now. We're in a computer age where there's a lot of people who are now digging online. You know, they type in some rare group and they blog it and they enter these blogs and there's like hundreds and hundreds of people's albums ready for you to download. You know, that's the easy way out. But for me, I still like, love going to a record store and looking at album covers, reading credits, looking at labels, and digging for these records. I mean, it's just no other feeling. It's part of my psyche. It's part of my development. It's part of my soul. It's just something that I don't think I'll ever stop doing as long as I live. So... That's it, I mean, I'm a, I'm a junkie, I'm a, I'm a record lover, and I'll never stop. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, this was kind of one of the questions on the Master of the Mix show, and the one thing that I, I said was, we're hunters. That was my answer, because that's what we do, we're hunting and looking for new sounds. You know, the, found, the founding, the foundation of it, like, at this point, the point that we started was like the hunter. Yeah, we were hunting and looking for, because it was all about, okay, if Bam played, and he had a rare break, you would try to find out what that break was, and then you were also hunting to find a better break than what he played at the PAL Center. Like, I was, I, you know, I was a hunter. So I was taking it in all aspects. I was jacking people's mother's record collections, aunts, and with you know, and plus buying my own. And then early on in my career, I was known from young. So I was a part of uh, record pools and all of those things. And then my uh, legacy and my career on the radio afforded me to uh, get a lot of records for free. VIP. Uh, yes. Al VIP Pizarro. record, record pool, Al Pizarro. And um, I just, I gave away a record collection that was probably the size of the, you know, like if we put them all on the walls, I gave away a collection that, that large, not gave away, but sold it to the guy, what's his name in Jersey? Al, uh, Al um, Lindstrom? No, no, not Al Lindstrom, 21st century, jo John, yeah, I sold the collection that large to him in the 90s. And then I still, my collection right now is probably close to 100,000. Like, I'm not trying to be funny, I could show, show pictures. Like when people come to my house, they're like. <laughs> so, it's, it's insane. It's a sickness. Yeah, you know. I, I, it took, I had to move recently and it took six trips with a 24 foot truck. I'm not lying. So if I sell it, if I sell my collection, I would like to just get rid of it and wall in one wop, probably to a Japanese person or somebody. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready yet. But holla at the kid. Now, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, um, bring it up to the future a little bit. You know, of course, when we were all coming up, we didn't have places like, you know, Scratch DJ Academy to show us actually how to, to you know, to DJ, to learn how to DJ. You know, we all did it by just watching people and, you know, and trial and error. 
Um, so what I want to know is, is you know, what do you guys teach aside from the skills? You know, what do you teach the, the, the kids that come in now about about vinyl? You know, versus the digital stage and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, it's exactly like you said. Like when we all started, there was no Scratch DJ Academy, and you know, now that there is, you know, we're able to, you know, students are able to learn. You know, what took us years to learn in a matter of like months, really. You know, so. Um, but the thing that I think I'm most proud of when it comes to Scratch is the fact that people pick up on all the skills, but I think what Scratch really does is it also teaches the culture. And I think that's huge. And like, you know, to really teach the art form and the culture, aside from just, you know, the skill set. Because really you could learn how to, how to do this Scratch or learn how to do this by watching a YouTube video. But it's not about that. And, you know, now you're a part of the community and we're trying to pass on some of those things that we all learn, you know? Um, in LA, uh, we started doing this, and it's something that we're going to be rolling out in New York too, and, and all over. Is uh, in actually our 101 class, we take the students digging. So we go to a record store. So that like, there's really no other way to explain it because we could sit up here all day and talk about how great it is to feel this and whatnot, but until you're actually experiencing it, it's crazy. And we have some students that are, you know, kind of reluctant. Like, no, no, no. Why would I pay rec pay for records when I can download it for free? Um, and then once they get in there, they find, you know, they look at this cover and they're like, whoa, what is this? And they right, listen to it experience. now. Experience. Yeah, exactly. And that that's huge. And you know, not only that, but you know, I think from inception, Scratch DJ Academy, the big principle here has always been to teach off of vinyl and to start with vinyl. And now with you know all sorts of things coming out, the different technology, we're not afraid of the technology and we teach that too, but you start on vinyl because everything is based off of that, you know, and the techniques of everything is all based on what you do on the actual analog turntable. And it translates over, and I use the analogy in class sometimes, you know, working with vinyl is like driving stick. Yeah, if you can drive stick, you can drive any car. Yeah. You know what I mean? However, you start with automatic, you start with CDJs, or you start with like, you know, looking at things on like virtual DJ or whatever, there's no way. You'd stand in front of this turntable like, I don't even know how to turn it on. You know? So that's exactly why we start with vinyl first though, and then, you know, it's up to you, wherever you want to go with it. You want to use MP3s, NS7, whatever you want to do. One of, one of my metaphors that I use as well in the class is like a race car driver. He doesn't start out with the, the million dollar car. They start out as young kids in go-karts. And, you know, I say, you know, they, they understand that was from starting from that point, um, they're just learning everything from the ground up. So let's say if something happens with the car, like if some oil or something is spilling, they started from young and from the basics, so they're like, oh, that smells like this, or that smells like that. Like, they may not be able to uh, fix the engine of the NASCAR, but they know from sound, the, what's 